Hi there. Today in What Kids Need, we're going to talk about keeping them busy. <laughs> if you've got kids, you need to keep these kids busy. I found when our kids weren't busy, they got into all sorts of mischief. I'd come in and there was a wheelbarrow being emptied of sand in my lounge. So you really need to keep an eye on your kids, but you need to keep them busy. I think it's really important to know who your children are. So if you have a child who's very bright or musical or sporty, that you need to keep maintaining that they can keep playing or doing those things. It's important that your home becomes like a secondary activity center, even when they're little. So I suggest that you have maybe seven, seven to eight different activities that are set up all around the house that the children can go to. And a bit like cardio when you go to cardio and they send you to those fitness places and they get you on different stations and I think you should set up different stations so you have indoor stations and inside the house and you have outdoor stations and then you have going out stations where you go to the park or you go to the beach or you go to throw hoops down at the school if you keep your children busy and active first of all they will be increasing all their knowledge base and their reflexes and keep healthy and well and also achieving everything then you'll probably be often be with them doing it or their brothers and sisters and if they're an only child they've got that activity to do so they won't be as lonely and the other thing about keeping them active is that it keeps some kind of focus they'll be more focused on what they're doing and less focused on getting into mischief with other kids or on their own. It also makes the house so interesting. I used to have like eight different stations when they were small before they went to school. So I'd have painting section, the collage, the cutting out stuff, the Lego, the cooking section, all different sections like that, the dress up box. And my house looked like a little mini kindy, but they always had something to do they always had something they can do and then I had a little cubby so then they didn't want to talk to people or they want to be on their own they'd go in their little they had a little cubby made of blankets and you go in there and just read and have some time out so when you do your activities make sure you have some single things if you've got a child who's a bit more introverted they'll need their space in their room or you create a space for them to go and read or dream or play with their dolls or whatever they want to do or their lego I don't think parents realise that a lot of the time you're having trouble with your children is because they're bored and children get really bored really quickly and their attention span is small. So once they've done something after a few minutes they will be bored with that. I remember when I first started teaching in reception which in Australia is like the first year they're only five and I went in the room and this kid came up to me and he went um, Oh, I don't know what to do and I said oh just go and get a book and read the book and he said but I can't read <laughs> and it made me really aware of where everyone is at that you also have to have expectations that are realistic with children you can't have unrealistic expectations like they can't read they can't read can they when you are also doing this do it in the sense that you have the single activity they can do on their own then you have the ones they'll do with other children so either within the family and or children who visit and then you'll have the ones you do together with maybe their mum and dad or as a family so you can have all these different activities and then change them all the time I used to change mine all the time as some people actually have boxes they keep with um, if the children have been given lots and lots of toys for example at Christmas they will open them all and then the put some of them away and then keep bringing up the different ones and rotate them a little bit and if you have young children I suggest you go and find a toy library they're fabulous because you just borrow them for a week and all the puzzles and everything and the trucks and the, the train sets and off you go you can also have an ongoing hobby for example uh, when the children are a little bit older you might play video games with them and in that way you can establish that kind of relationship you might make a train set, you might be building something outside, maybe a building a fort or whatever they want. And outside make sure you have things for them like water play and then you want to have a sand pit if they're younger. If it's safe in your area you have to be careful with sand pits because cats tend to like them. And also then you need to have some uh, healthy equipment so swinging bars for them to swing on and swings and maybe trampoline try and set up your place like it's a, a kindy or a 
outdoor centre for your children, it will pay dividends because a lot of the time you'll hear children say, but I'm bored. And then you go like, okay, let's go and do so and so. And while they're busy and while they're focused, they won't be as grumpy and also they won't uh, fight as much because the focus is on doing the leg or whatever. Of course, children and families fight. We all know that. This just goes with the territory. But while they're both for a while playing a video game together or playing on the trampoline together or doing some water play, they won't be fighting as much. It cuts it back a bit because a smart and bored child will make trouble. That's what you'll find out because they're exploring territory all the time. And, and if you keep them busy in the kind of territory that's safe, it'll be less likely that they'll be doing things that you don't expect. I remember looking out my backyard and we had one of those clotheslines that whizzes around. It's called a rotary clothesline in, in Australia. And I looked out and I think it was Mother's Day and I had two of my boys swinging on it and swinging round and round and round, making it like something at the fairground because they just had made something new to do. And that's the other thing you'll find that children will also make up their own games and devise their own games. And you can be part of the beginning of that process by starting to be showing them how you could do this or that. And then later you'll find they'll start to do that more and more. When your children are bored, they're going to be more able to get into mischief and be naughty. And that goes with going out to the shops as well. So if you've got to go and visit somebody, you've got to go say to the coffee shop, take a bag and take drawing, colouring in, little things they can play with, their headphones, maybe their Nintendo, whatever you need that they will not be bored because after they've had their drink or eat, have eaten, they will often be bored. And that's a really good thing to do. And if you're going on a, a trip, a long trip, always have things in the car that they can play with and books that they can read, activities that they can do in the car. And when you go to the shops, you need to be really aware that they will get bored with grocery shopping so try and make it fun with around on the trolley and maybe do some reward system so when you go to the shop afterwards you go and have a snack or an ice cream or if they want to have sushi and you make it like a, an outing that they're part of because the reason children are bored is because they're not involved so you have to involve them like as much as possible and that can be singing songs in the car or playing I spy and all these things which keeps everyone sort of on track and they're not as um they're not going to be kicking and hitting their sister who's sitting them as, as much as usual should we say i mean it's not going to stop it but it will minimize it to quite a degree keep them busy you will find the input that you make with them will be worth it so if you set up all these new activities it'll be worth it uh, the play-doh the plasticine all the different things you set up these will all be worth it and you can pack them away and then bring them out and pack them away and bring them out. And I think you can do like what I call quiet activities and then do really noisy ones. So if they want to make a lot of noise, you play the music up loud and you jump all over the place and do dancing or singing karaoke. Being noisy, like being noisy. Children love to be noisy and allow them to be noisy. Okay, it's important that they sing and yell and scream and jump and that's what kids do. You just have to walk past the schoolyard and just stand there for five minutes and you'll see everyone's having a lovely time. Also set up play dates with your kids so that they have other children to play with and take them to some of those, if you can afford it of course, take them to some of those places where they have all that equipment. You go in there and you pay and the kids just run around and climb up things and bounce and there's lots and lots to do within those places. If you don't have a lot of money, you go to other places, you go to museums, you go to the beach, go to the art gallery if they're interested in those things. You go to somewhere where they can run, you know, some outdoor playgrounds. Explore all the playgrounds that you've got in your area and go to a different playground every week to explore it. Put their bikes in the car and take their bikes and you can go and do some pretend BMX biking. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You can still get them outside, go to the creek, take a bucket, see if you can find any tap poles. It's very important that you do this. Down at Out Creek, it's really cute. They started this thing where they painted rocks and coloured these rocks in little rocks and the children obviously painted them. And children leave them for the other children. 
and then people take some of the rocks home and then they replace it and take new rocks and it's really gorgeous because you go down there you can see all these little painted rocks that people have left for other people to have and then next week you go and walk down there and they, they've gone but there's some other painted rocks so you can start doing things like that and you can also take them to what I call like more of a regimented thing where they go to gym or karate or whatever the place does it you have to have money to do these things I know but you can take them to those things as well and basketball and swimming keep them busy you keep them busy you have less trouble with them and your life will be better with them and it will be a much more positive life it's important they are they are the treasures of your life and it's worth making the investment and you can have particularly if your children are a little older you can have a chat with them about what activities they'd like to have more around the house where they'd like to go and make your little kids bucket list and then t tick it off and do it bit by bit I hope this is helpful today <laughs> when my kids weren't busy mm, there were lots of other things happening at my house so I learned to keep them busy and you're going to still have them getting into stuff because they're exploring aren't they and they're they're looking and remember what sort of children they are if you have musical children uh, provide lots of musical instruments and maybe get them to learn it's really good now you can have no money and teach them from the internet because there's so many people doing podcasts if they're sporty have a sporty house where there's sports things all the time I remember with mine I had a wooden floor in my lounge and they had set up uh, ice hockey in there so we pushed everything back and did ice in the freezer and they made pucks and off we went and the puck was the ice and they had their little sticks and they would play ice hockey in my lounge <laughs> I think most people probably wouldn't allow that but it was an activity and didn't hurt anyone and they thought it was fabulous and great memory so be also very adventurous in yourself at what you will and won't allow in the house it's important okay it's like stretch those rules to keep them busy and keep them really happy and enjoy your kids and all the activities and enjoy taking lots of photos of them because I'm sure you are so I'm sending you lots of love and lots of healing for you and your family and I hope that you have a very active week <laughs>